Yes, it pays to have good credit. Absolutely, no question. <laughs>
versus if you were like a landscaping company or car detailer. So what what are the different types of marketing for somebody that, you know, have no idea what they're doing or they just don't know where to invest? Right, Chris, great question, man. Um, I would break it down basically like this. So you have like your legacy marketing or even you can call it advertising because these things kind of overlap a little bit. And this is when like, yeah. you know, you go to a newspaper and you get a classified ad or you get a whole banner in the newspaper, you know, and people still do this. There's nothing wrong with this kind of advertising or marketing, but it's definitely more legacy. Right. It's more old school, uh, more for established brands. Usually they'll add this kind of marketing to like a million dollar portfolio they have of other types of avenues they market. Um, you know, then you got billboards. Billboards are pretty similar. Um, the pros of billboards is that you can reach a lot of people, a lot of people at one time. Okay. The, the, the cons are these aren't targeted people. It's just whoever yep. drives by your sign, looks out the window and says, Oh, look at that. And, and, and they read it. And, and look, this could be effective. I'm not, like I said, I'm not dogging on any of these methods, but um, that right. is the main drawback. <laughs> some of these legacy type, types of advertising and marketing. Uh, then you have digital marketing. And I'll give you the pros and okay. cons of digital marketing. The pros okay. of digital marketing, and it's a vast, vast arena of different services, different products. Um, you know, you have social media, you have uh, Google uh, search engine optimization, which is a fancy word. We'll talk about that later. Uh, yep. Pay-per-click advertising. That's when you put an ad on top of Google and you pay every time somebody clicks on it. Facebook ads, um, you know, and, and there's other avenues, video creation, graphics. We can go on and on. The pros with digital marketing is that it's more targeted to your audience, which means that if you want to advertise mm -hmm. on Facebook to people that are like, 25 to 35 who fit a certain profile and we'll talk more yep. about you know, customer personas and things like that and your ideal client but if you want to target these exact people you can do that you have that option you can target cities you can target like you know really small areas or really large areas it's, it, it's your call whatever makes more sense for your business um right really the cons are this um some people do view the more legacy things like a newspaper or a commercial on TV or a billboard. They may view them as in a weird way legitimized because they've been around so long, they're tried and true. And when you see something on a billboard, that's, you know, that's a pretty cool feeling. So that's really the only right. main con. But at the end of the day, the important thing is you're getting your message across. People are understanding your brand yep. and they're, they're wanting to do business with you. Um, so I, I think digital okay. marketing, I'm a little biased, but I think this is the best avenue, especially for a new business owner to go in to advertise their business. Okay. Yeah. That was actually my, my next question. Um, you know, for those who are watching this episode or listening to this episode, you may have some people who are more of a online business like drop shipping or, you know, any type of online service. And then you may have some who are watching and listening to this who are maybe more of a local business, like a car detailer, a landscaper, or uh, a roofing company. So in, in your experience, if I was a new business owner for both type of businesses, uh, I'm gonna start with online services. Which type of marketing uh, do you believe is best for online services? Would you just jump straight into social media, digital marketing? Sure. Um Without question, it's not even a question. If you're a brand new business owner who wants to make the yep. most impact, it's got to be digital marketing straight up. Um, okay. Here's why. Here's why. You can literally start digital marketing like this week and get results like at the end of the week. Um, if you put money into advertising, if you put money yeah. <laughs> into pay per click, um, even social media management, if you you know, need somebody to basically make social media posts for you that, that will convert uh, people that are looking at it into people that message you and eventually become your customers. Right. I mean, you can get clients pretty quickly, whereas a lot of these legacy types of advertising, number one, they're expensive. Okay, straight up. Um, most business owners nowadays <laughs> are all businesses. We're, we're on a shoestring budget. Yep. Um, I'm not afraid to say this. I've I financed part of my business to start. 
Um, you know, not yep. very much, but just enough to kickstart it and, and, and get it going. And there's nothing right. wrong with it. If you're spending your money intelligently and there's a plan, there's a method behind the madness, um, you know, that's okay. You, you got to do what you got to do to get rolling. Uh, but right. you know, with, without a doubt, man, digital marketing is where it's at as far as advertising a brand. Okay. Business. Well, it, it's, it's funny you said financing and which goes back to, you know, using credit, man, when I first started the credit repair business, I just had no idea of all the different things and requirements you needed. Uh, for example, here in Louisiana or each state that you work in, you have to have a credit repair bond and the credit repair bond amount for Louisiana is $100,000. Now that $100,000, oh. you pay a percentage of that. Uh, I, I think here in Louisiana is, you know, anywhere between one to 10% based on your credit. Um, so luckily by me having good credit, mine only cost a thousand dollars to get my um, credit repair bond in Louisiana. And then once I started expanding in different States, of course, legally, I had to get a bond in each state uh, that I accept clients from. But man, starting from day one, I was working at the car dealership and man, there was just no way I could have paid for these bonds, softwares, websites. And most importantly, man, I never wanted to be one of those uh, Facebook credit guys and uh, posting every day. Hey, you know, slide in my DM to fix your credit or something like that. I wanted to go straight in as a legit business, you know, before I even started Sturgis Credit Repair. Uh, I kind of basically study, you know, legit businesses or bigger businesses. Doesn't matter if it's credit repair or not. I just study what these businesses does. And man, marketing is the key thing. So the very first thing I did was I applied for a credit card through Capital One. It was a Saver One or Saver credit card. Yeah. Man, that gave me a $30,000 credit limit when I was just working at the car dealership. And I mean, my scores were like 720, 730, something like that. And that credit card, it gave like two to three percent cash back. It gave me like three hundred or five hundred dollars uh, if I spent like five grand in the uh, the first first ninety days or something crazy like that. That was easy. And on top of that, it was zero percent interest for eighteen months. So I literally used my credit to start my business. And man, I, I paid no interest because I paid it off within maybe eight or nine months. Because dude, I just went heavy into marketing. And I, I ran Facebook ads, uh, Google ads, YouTube ads. And man, before you know it, I was able to quit the car dealership in like two months. And man, Sturgis Credit Repair has just kicked off ever since. And, I, you know, I now accept clients in all 50 states and, you know, we're just steady growing. But man, if it wasn't for credit and marketing, I mean, I, I probably don't think I would have, you know, expanded the way I did, you know. Wow. Yeah, man, that's, that's an incredible story there. And. You know, credit doesn't have the right reputation. It has a reputation of oh, getting, yeah. getting right. the credit card debt. And it, it, it's just not the case if you're a savvy business owner who comes out the gate swinging with a plan. Um, you know, everybody who's at a high level, or at least the people that I talk to, they utilize credit to their advantage and they make it a smart exactly. financial. So, yeah, man, right. that's off to you, dude. I, well, I, I sold cards. I sold cards. <laughs> I know, I know what that's about. Uh, right. Well, the thing is with these uh, small business owners, okay, let's start back before that, before it's a small business. So you have a lot of people before their, their business is a small business or a business in general, it's more of a side hustle, right? And right. It, the hardest part about business believe it or not, is first, of course, finding out what your business name is going to be. That that takes forever. But um, the hardest part is going from zero to the point where you no longer have to work a day job or you, know, you no longer have to stress. And man, I see so many people complain about, oh man, no one's sharing my post or I have family and friends. They're not supporting me. They're not tagging me in different things. And I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's going to suck to hear this, but it's not your family or your friend's job to help your business grow. You know, when I started Sturgis Credit Repair, I never even thought of, okay, I'm just going to create a Facebook page and a website. I'm just going to rely on my friends and family. Hopefully they share my post every day. Man, I didn't care about that. I went deep into marketing and man, so many people just do not think about marketing. What? Why do you think that is? Well, I guess because, you know, 
people people have a misconception about business. I think a lot of times yes. everybody wants right. to dot their I's and cross their T's. They want to make sure they got yeah. the right color pen to write contracts. They want to make sure they got a filing cabinet. They want to make sure, you know, they have everything done to where it's like everything's crystal clear. Now we can get clients. And I think it's a big procrastination. And I'm not saying your audience is like this, but I know to an extent I was like this a little bit. I wanted everything right. perfect, perfect before I've dumped any money into marketing. But the truth is when you're in business, now you, you want to do things correctly. I, I don't want you to read into what I'm saying too much, but you, you got to like run yeah. and almost break things and see what fits, what doesn't fit, and then go from there and then double down on what's successful for you. And when it comes to marketing, it's just so fundamental. You know, you can have everything correct, but if you're not bringing eyes to your service, exactly. your product, it, it's just, you're not going to make money. Um, it, it's just so right. fundamental. Um, and I, I'm going to add a, a little bit more to your point as well. Um, okay. Somebody's out there and, you know, they just started a business. I, I just want you to know, Chris has been in your shoes. I've, I've been in your shoes too, where it's like, man, we, we, we got to go get clients. We, we got to go, you know, you know, make some money and, and give our service and help people. But how do we do it? Right. Start yes. I think it's a great idea to talk to your friends talk to your family, talk to your acquaintances. Of course. I would not drive, you know, your business down their throats. I don't think that's right. But I would definitely, you know, start conversations and start offering your services like, like a discounted rate perhaps and get some reviews, man. You know, get, get some feedback from people. That's what's going to propel you going forward in the future. So I, I just wanted right. to mention that too in case somebody's out there and doesn't know how to get started get clients yeah at least get your first couple of clients that way okay well i, I have a fun one for you so uh we're, we're both in two industries where I, I guess people who are starting a business don't really uh consider uh one is credit and then of course second is marketing um so in the credit industry i hear so much man about people are like oh cash is king you don't need credit and then i'm sure in your market you hear Word of mouth is your best form of marketing. Never pay for marketing, never pay for ads. So I know I get annoyed when, you know, outdated sources are like, you know, cash is king. You know, of course, that's more that is more like the Dave Ramsey clientele. I, I get that. People that mess themselves up because they use credit incorrectly. Uh, right. And then you have the people that are like, you know, uh, the best marketing is word of mouth you um how do you switch a person or or i guess why do people say you know the best marketing is word of mouth are they just comfortable to the five or ten clients they get a month just from referrals and word of mouth and they just do not see themselves scaling your business is that why they say that you think ah uh, so you, you've definitely done your research uh I, I can't count how many times i've heard no man it's just all it's all word of mouth it's fine it's fine it's gonna catch on and, and I know in your industry, you know, you got the Dave Ramsey crowd who is making, you know, credit cards like this evil thing. And it's really not, you know, you just have to know how to do it. Right. I think most oh, people, yeah, default, yeah, I think most people default to like the very, very easiest route where there's like some semblance of truth to it, but it's not really the full truth. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, yes, there is one school of thought that if you don't, do anything with credit cards, you're not going to get into credit card debt. There's zero possibility. Well, right. yeah, sure, but, but you know, yeah. it's going to be a very slow growth period for you if you're trying to grow a business with no credit. Right. Um, right. There is some semblance of truth that word of mouth is going to grow your business. Absolutely. Yeah, you want to do a good job. You want people to like you and like your service. But I would take it a step further. If word of mouth grows your business, why not publicize the word of mouth? publicize the right. reviews people give you, publicize, um, you know, the good work you're doing and put some content up, you know, social media content, you know, run some ads that put your best foot forward and shows exactly what you're doing for your clientele. So I, right. I, I wouldn't, you know, you know, for your clients, I wouldn't stop at Dave Ramsey. I would explore some more. <laughs> yeah, fine. You get it. Don't, don't go into credit card debt. That's frivolous. Okay, great. Yep. But also with marketing, don't stop with just word of mouth capitalize on that word of mouth, make it mean something once you get it. Right. 
And uh, another thing that discouraged people is, I guess, if you're starting a small business, is competition, uh, competition in your local area that are, you know, businesses that are bigger than you. Uh, for example, you know, I, I tell people all the time, I never worry about who else does credit repair around me because look at it this way. There are 331 million people in the United States right now. Last time I checked, it may be more than that now, but who, who cares? Um, there's, there's a Walmart in every single city in America, if not five of them. And every Walmart is making millions and millions of dollars every single month. Outside of Walmart, you got these smaller grocery stores like uh, here in Louisiana. We have Rouse's, you have uh, Winn Dixie, you have um, whatever Target and things like that. Walmart is not affecting their clientele. So, with marketing, I think it's very important that you don't worry about who else does the same thing in your neighborhood. You know, I, I think with marketing, the best thing you can do is figure out you know, who your clientele is and, 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 you know, how to find them. So based on you with your experience with marketing, um, how important is it to find your ideal market or your specific clientele? And how do you narrow down to find those people or to, to figure out which clientele is yours? Yeah. So first thing I want to say about that is, um, Chris, if you ever want to expand into a different industry, I think you'd be amazing at marketing because, <laughs> You know, that entire thing about you know, okay. Walmart, <laughs> Walmart's on every corner. Um, and, yeah. and, that, and that's exactly right. Yeah. For good reason. And then you got Target right next door. But both of these companies are multi-billion dollar companies. They're, they're, they're gigantic. Right. Um, so, you know, that takes away the thought process of, oh, well, this, everything's saturated. I mean, yeah, everything is pretty much saturated. So what you have to do is you have to find who your ideal client is. You have to picture, you know, their age, their demographic, uh, where, where are they located? What are their wants and needs? You know, what is their day to day life like? And the way that you do that is you just talk to people. You talk to people and you, you can you can go search for somebody on Google as well that has like buying personas. You can go Google that right now, like the buying persona for credit. Repair. Yeah. And you, you're going to have a big thing. Right. That pops up. And you can you can judge based on that. But I think that the best way for somebody just starting out is just talk to people find like kind of learn about them and their values and what matters to them and also their goals and where they're trying to go in life and once you do that and once you can mesh that with your brand and your marketing and your message you know that's key that's going to be gold for you right. and you're going to get sales based on that right um based on you being in the market of course uh with marketing or the industry how often does marketing change? Because man, when I first started my credit repair business um, five, six years ago, however long, well, five years ago, man, it was literally as simple as making ads, you know, with a flyer, you know, just showing, hey, if you have credit issues and you have these certain items in your credit report, contact Sturgis Credit Repair, we can help you, uh, you know, do things on your behalf as a service, blah, blah, blah. And people will sign up and then, Two years later, it was more like, you know, people want to see a flyer. They wanted to see a picture of your face on the flyer to make sure you're a real business. And then after that, man, two or three years later, people no longer cared about that. They wanted to see results. And then after that, nobody cared about screenshots of results. You know, people just stopped responding to it. And then these companies, uh, Lexington Law Firm, they're like the biggest credit repair company out there. And I, I noticed they start making these little 30 second video or, or clip art animated videos. And man, they're getting like 200,000 comments on it because it just grabs people's attention. So I guess flyers and pictures and screenshots are like the past of marketing is now it's more like animated videos. So how often does this change and, and, and why? Yeah, look, awesome question there. So marketing is constantly evolving. Um, you know, you'll see trends like video has always been a big deal in like 2015, 2016, but it's just right. exploded. And I don't have the data in front of me, but I've read studies on this. Um, video is really where you want to go in 2024 if you're going to market, market your business. 
I don't, I don't know what happened yeah. in the marketplace, but that just connects more. And I, I, I have a couple of theories on that. I think that once a marketplace gets saturated with one form of advertising, people just kind of get blind to it. You know, like, yeah, yeah. fine. You showed results. And I think results are still very important. Don't get me wrong. But it's how you portray those results. You know, are you just spitting numbers at people nonstop or are you kind of explaining those numbers and explaining those figures and explaining those results in a more digestible way? Um, like, you know, you've noticed lately re reels like TikTok has exploded. Obviously, we don't know about TikTok. Yeah. But for a while, some people thought that was a fad. That was a fad for like uh, teenagers yeah. and people in their early 20s. And you, now you yeah. got senior citizens on TikTok. Um, right. So, you know, podcast. Hey, we're on a podcast right now. You know. Uh, right. I mean, I mean, ten, ten years ago, if you're on a podcast, it was like, all right, that's different. Now it's like, man, if you're right. on a podcast. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Chris. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, you're good. I, I say yeah. That's something I struggle with today. Is just the adapting to change. You know, when it when all this stuff changed with marketing. You know, and I, I can do a lot of things myself, but man, you know, for example, I just got fed up with the animated video things, you know, like our most uh, most recent ad video. I just hire you guys at a typical to just, you know, make it work. And man, it has outperformed every little screenshot of results or flyers that I've ever made in the past. And, you know, from now on, I'm just going to use you guys as a, uh, I guess, an ad campaign service and, and just make content for me because, I just can't keep up anymore, you know, and, and another thing, these social media apps, every single year, there's a new app that you have to download, put your business on, because back then you used to just on Facebook and just post stuff and, you know, you get social media leads or social media customers and then Instagram and then YouTube and then TikTok and Snapchat. So I, I guess how do people manage all of these different apps Let, let's say if i had a marketing budget of i don't know three thousand dollars a month do i say i have 10 apps that my business is on and just um split that three thousand dollars among all 10 apps or should i just do one app this month three grand next month go from facebook to instagram next month put the three grand to youtube next month put the three grand to TikTok. You know, based on your experience with just social media marketing, uh, what, what is idea these days with the amount of apps they have now? Yeah, so excellent question there. Um, here's where I would start. Okay, everybody needs a starting point. The three biggest right. apps now, Facebook. You, you already knew that answer. Facebook's number one. Yeah. Then you got Instagram, and then you got TikTok. Um, yep. Then you got a bunch that are that are under it, and I mean these are important, but I wouldn't focus immediately on just like doubling and tripling and quadrupling down on say Snapchat. I'm not saying Snapchat's bad, <laughs> but right. it, it, it's kind of like you have to you have to research and you have to basically trial and error and find out which platform's going to work best for your brand. Now I might recommend right. Snapchat to an e-com brand, for instance. That's a great avenue. And it also depends on what the demographics are of each network. I, I like to think of Facebook as a Walmart. Everybody goes to Facebook. It's, it's like the common meeting place, every age group, every demographic. Instagram skews a little bit younger. That's kind of like your target. You know, it's, it's a little yeah. more hip. It's still, it's still kind of, you know, yeah. mainstream. But and then TikTok yeah. is, I don't really have a store for TikTok, but it's kind of like a, a young, a younger vibe, a younger place to, you know, vibe. And it's just, it's good for short form videos <laughs> under 90 seconds. Um, exactly. And if you want a younger, younger crowd, that's where you want to go. So it's all about just okay. finding out where your, your ideal client hangs out online. And once you find that out, okay. then I would double and triple down on that exact medium. Okay. Uh, do you think there is a, or I don't know, is there a such thing as a rule for, I guess, a percentage of your income should go towards marketing? Uh, is that like a real thing? Is there a number that, you know, each business is supposed to dump towards marketing each month? Yeah, sure. So at the end of the day, it's whatever amount of money it's going to take to make sure that your investment means something. 
So if you're putting, you know, month after month, a thousand dollars into marketing, you want that to represent two thousand, three thousand dollars at least in more right. revenue for, for your business. Um, and yep. you know, I, I like to say if if you wanted to give somebody, say, a hundred thousand dollars, and you knew that they were going to double and triple that every single month, is there really a amount that you would stop giving them? You know, it, it just as long as somebody's making good decisions with your money and it's coming from an investment standpoint um i don't think there's really any kind of of limit um now if you want the textbook definition i can tell you that um experts recommend anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of your revenue for marketing expenses and i, I okay. think that's i think that's reasonable there's nothing wrong with that yeah. but i would say make it make sense for your business every business is unique and you know there's no dead set percentage necessarily, at least from what I'm observing in the marketplace. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about a typical marketing for a second. Um, let's say anybody that's listening or watching this episode would like to hire you guys uh, to help their, their business scale up. So what, what services do you guys offer? Um, you know, and, and what type of businesses do y'all market to? Is it any businesses that y'all would help or, or, you know, tell us a little about that. Yeah, sure. So, um, like I said earlier, I'm co-owner of a typical marketing. My other co-owner's name is Sarah. Okay. And we do a lot of different services. Okay. I, I personally focus mostly on consulting. You know, I'll talk to the business owners. I'll find out who their customer base is, what their needs are, and develop a specialized plan from there. Um, Sarah's really good at implementing. She designs websites. She does logo design. Um, you know, anything graphic related, making something look presentable, making it look really nice. She is a com complete professional with that. I don't have that skill. I wish I did. Um, but she <laughs> is the one to go to. I, I'm more on the back end where if it has to do with search engine optimization, ads, or anything that's kind of technical, you know, that's more my department. And of course, I, I talk to all the business owners. Um, it's really important that I understand where you're coming from and where you want to go. That way we can oh. get on the same page and put together a good plan. Um, right. But that's, as far as services, good. yeah, as far as services, um, you know, you name it, uh, Google My Business Services, you know, we'll put you on the Google map. Um, we build e-com websites. We build uh, service-based business websites, you know, things for like plumbers, electricians, landscapers, car detailers. Uh, yeah, you know, we both built a uh, physiologist a website recently. I didn't know what a physiologist did uh, until we, we, <laughs> we started working on marketing. Um, right. and, and of course, cre of course, credit repair. We work on you know we do marketing for credit repair companies. Um, you know, you name it. We okay, attempt so a little bit of all of them. Yeah, a little bit of all of them. You know, we, we attempt to really understand your industry, and you know kind of make it come full circle to where we're all on the same page. That's really important to us. Okay. Um, got one thing for you. What is up with all of this chat, G, T, P, P, T, whatever it is, and AI and all this nonsense? Is this like the new age of, is, is marketing changing again to where it's robots doing everything for you? What What is this stuff? Yeah, yeah. Like a AI is... Uh, incredible. If I can put, a, I know that's an overused word, but it, it's really incredible what AI is able yeah. to do. I mean, you can type this thing in; it can do yeah. calculations for you. It can figure out complex uh, problems. It, it can even draw pictures. You know, you can type in any of these AI forms, whether it's ChatGPT or if you go to Bing. I think Bing has their own AI thing. Type in some words, describe a picture. You can type in "pink bunny riding a unicycle" and give it ten okay. seconds. I pop out a picture of a pink bunny riding a unicycle. Um, <laughs> now, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I think there's always going to be some human interaction with marketing, right. and with business, and with sales. Because at the end of the day, we're, we're all humans. Um, I, like to, I like to think of AI as a really good tool that builds like the frame of the house, but it doesn't build the entire house. It just kind of gives you a little bit of a head start right um on something if you need some help you know that, that's that's pretty much okay. what AI is in that shell 
Well, man, that 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 answered a lot of questions. I mean, this entire episode, I mean, I even learned some stuff. I mean, of course, the questions I'm asking you are, are mainly for both of our audience out there that's listening or watching this. But, man, I, I've learned so much just, you know, with some things I make and do to, you know, help myself with some things. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess if anyone's watching or listening this, what is the best way for somebody that owns a business to get in touch with a typical, you know, either you or Sarah, what is the best way that they can do or, you know, how, how can they find you guys just go on your website or, or call or, or what's the best thing to do? Yeah, Chris, great question. Um, so I, I did put this TV here and if you're able to scan that, I'm not sure how big the frame is. You can scan oh, yeah, that. It's up there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you can also go to atypicalmarketing.com and you can fill out a form okay. on the bottom of our page. You can also schedule a 30 minute free consult with somebody on our team. Um, if you want to call us, maybe I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do this anyway. Uh, this is my direct cell phone. Call me, text me. Okay. I, I want to talk to as many people as I possibly can. Um, and I'll do it as long as I possibly can do that for uh, 702 582 1650. That's my personal Got cell it. phone number. Text me and let's let's schedule a meeting. Let's get together. Let's talk about everywhere that you want to take your business and get an action plan on how to do it. So I'm ready. Okay. To hit me up and we'll make it happen. Well, still, man, thank you so much for joining this episode, man. And like I said, you you literally answered every single question that I've had and added some things, you know. So, you know, I definitely appreciate you for joining. But before I let you go, I got one last question. Do you think it pays to have good credit? Absolutely. It, it, it pays to have good credit. <laughs> it's not even okay. a question. I, I heard what you said. I'm like, what? Yeah. It, it definitely pays to have good credit. Good question. Okay. Just want to make sure, <laughs> man. But like I said, thank you so much for joining, man. And hopefully we got some people that's watching or listening to this. They'll go check out you guys' website and you can help them scale up those businesses, man. And, you know, like I said, hopefully we can do this again in the future when marketing changes again and probably in the next six months. <laughs> Sounds awesome, Chris. I really appreciate the invite, man. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take it easy. You too, man. Take care.